Okay, this is a presentation of the homework problems for section 4.7. Um, these are all story problems, and uh, I, I just wanted to have something together for you guys to refer to when you hit a wall, and you're going to hit a wall on a few of these problems. They're going to be challenging, okay? Um, so let's kind of step through these, and I'll, I'll, I'll just try to be my very, very best today in this video. Number one. Express the area of a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle as a function of the length H of the hypotenuse. <laughs> so they're essentially asking you to come up with a formula for the area of a special right triangle, a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle, in terms of its hypotenuse. All right? This is what a, a mathematician does at the college level. All right? But it's not that difficult. Now, again, when you're doing these problems, uh, here's my rule. I want to draw a picture, then input the given information, and then come up with my mathematical model, and then I can use this mathematical model to answer any question. Okay, welcome to the world of a mathematician. So, diagram, the first thing I'm going to do is draw a 30, 60, 90 degree right triangle. So, here's my right triangle. There's my 90 degree angle right there. That would make this the 30 degree angle and this the 60 degree angle. So there it is right there. Now go back to your geometry class and I hope you remember the uh, special right triangle ratios. Okay, for instance, the shorter leg, if this were a one, that would make the longer leg a root three and the hypotenuse a two. Okay, 1 to root 3 to 2 is the special right triangle ratios for a 30, 60, 90 degree right triangle. Now, this is, you know, great. We have numbers if this lower leg is 1, but this lower leg, I'm coming up with my own formula, could be anything. So I'm going to rewrite that 1 as an x. I don't know what it is. So there's my x. Now let's write the other two dimensions of this special right triangle in terms of x. So 1 to root 3 becomes x to root 3 times x. All right, And 1 to 2 would become x to 2x. OK, now I'm set for any 30, 60, 90 degree triangle in that diagram. But guess what? They want our formula in terms of h the hypotenuse which i have written now as two times x right there so i need a third diagram and i'm going to write the hypotenuse now as h but again what was h it was two times x so if h is two times x then x would be see the short leg h over two all right and now what would root 3 times x be? Well, that'd be root 3 times h over 2. Okay? Oh, and I wrote that as root 3 over 2h. There we go. Now, there are the dimensions of any 30, 60, 90 degree special right triangle in terms of the hypotenuse h. Now, my job is easy because I know that I need area in terms of h. Well, what's area of a triangle? Again, it's base times height divided by 2, right? So let's start there. Area. And now I'm working on, I've got all my given information right here. Great diagram, given information. Now we're working on our mathematical model. All right? And area of a triangle again, base times height divided by 2. Okay, so in this diagram, my base is root 3 over 2 times h. My height is h over 2. And then we take that, divide by 2. Now let's simplify, and we have just come up with a very special formula. So a of h would be, well, let's see. My numerator would be root 3 times h times h, root 3 h squared. And then I'm dividing by 2, and I'm dividing by 2 again, and then I'm dividing all that by 2. So I'm really dividing by 8. And guess what? This is the area 
of a 30, 60, 90 degree special right triangle in terms of the hypotenuse of that triangle. We've just come up with a formula. So there's our mathematical model right there. <laughs> that's awesome. And that's what a mathematician does college level when they're coming up with their own theorems and stuff. You know, if we had done this many, many years ago, we'd be in a book right now. All right. Awesome job. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Okay, number five. A store owner bought N dozen toy boats at a cost of $3 per dozen and sold them at 75 cents each. Express the profit P in dollars as a function of N, the number of dozens sold. Okay, so you know what? This, there's not really a geometric model, you know, a diagram. So when I, I think about what I typically do, I don't have a picture really to draw, all right? So that's out. So I've got to think, is there information so I can create a mathematical model to answer this question? And what do they want? They want the profit, all right? So let's go back. What does profit equal in the business world? Profit is always income, or some people call that revenue, minus cost. The amount of money you bring in minus the cost. Income minus cost. So let's see if they have given us the information to come up with an expression for income and cost. And they want this in terms of N. All right. So first thing I notice right here is this, this, this owner of some store is going to sell these toy boats for 75 cents each. All right, now I need everything in dozens, but I'm going to make a little point right here first. I'm going to go let X equal the number of boats sold. So the income that this business owner is going to bring in is going to be 75 cents for every boat sold X. 0.75 times X right there. Now, or, now because I need everything in dozens, all right, well, What's 0.75 times 12? That'd be nine. So isn't that income gonna actually be $9 for every dozen boats sold? $9 per dozen. Awesome, all right? Now the cost. Well, the cost was $3 per dozen, right? There you go. Okay, so what's this store owner's profit gonna be in terms of N? Well. P in terms of N is income minus cost. And that's going to be income was $9 per dozen or 9N. Cost was $3 per dozen, 3N. And now combine like terms, P of N equals 9N minus 3N. That would be P of N equals 6 times N. Pretty good business right there. And what do we have? Our mathematical model. And that's all they asked us for right there. And this is a pretty happy store owner right there. All right, good gig. Okay, uh, number nine. A light three meters above the ground causes a boy 1.8 meters tall to cast a shadow S meters long. Well, go back. This is a great opportunity for a very important diagram right here. So let's start with the light. And the light is three meters above the ground. So that's three meters right there. Okay. Causes a boy that is 1.8 meters tall. So here's my boy right here that's 1.8 meters tall to cast a shadow that is S meters long. So let me get my arrow out. You see this distance right here? That's the boy's shadow caused by this light up here. So this is S. Now express S as a function of D, the boy's distance in meters from the light. So that'd be this distance right here is D. Now, how am I gonna express this length of the shadow right here in terms of D? Wow. Oh, well, again, we're talking height. This is the ground. So this is 90 degrees. This is 90 degrees. And what if I put a hypotenuse right here to create two similar right triangles? 
beautiful okay now what do I know those are similar triangles that are, would be two right triangles that are the same shape and you know that corresponding parts of geometric figures are proportional so let's set up our proportion so let's look at the smaller right triangle right here that has a height of 1.8 and a base of s so let's go 1.8 to s would have to equal the height of the larger right triangle that's the same shape 3 to the base of the larger right triangle d plus s all right now express s as a function of d that means we just have to take this proportion and solve for s okay so you guys how do you solve a proportion remember you cross multiply so let's go 3 times s equals 1.8 times d plus 1.8 times s there you go now let's see what are we solving for again express s we're solving for s so let's get those s's on the same side so 3s minus the 1.8 s's would be 1.2 s equals 1.8 d and now let's divide both sides by 1.2 so s in terms of d would be there's my d right there and let's simplify 1.8 divided by 1.2 and wouldn't that be 3 over 2 so there it is right there s in terms of d is 3 halves d or <laughs> s the length of the shadow will always be three halves of the length of the distance the boy is standing from that base of that light up there wow cool okay number 13 a stone is thrown into a lake and t seconds after the splash the diameter of the circle of ripples is t meters that sounds like a great opportunity to do a diagram so my stone hits the water and then there's a circle of ripples around where it hit the water just like that and they told me that the diameter of that circle was t so there's my t right there diagram express the circumference c of the circle as a function of t well, I already have the given information in it. All it was, they gave me the diameter is t. So they're asking me for a mathematical model. What's the circumference of a circle? So you go back to geometry now. Circumference, well, the circumference of any circle is always pi times diameter. All right? So what's the diameter of the circle? It is t. So c in terms of t is pi times t. There you go. Mathematical model. Check. Oh, there must be a part B. Express the area of the circle as a function of T. Okay. Area. Well, what's area of a circle? Pi R squared. Okay. So area in terms of T would be pi times the radius of this circle squared, which if the diameter is T, then the radius is T over 2. So there's my answer right there. If I wanted to rewrite that, I could square the t over 2 to get what? A pi times t squared, and then I've got to square the divisor over 4. So either of those answers are appropriate. And looks like that's all they asked for is a couple mathematical models right there. Okay, at 2 p.m., a bike A is 4 kilometers north of point C and traveling, traveling south at 16 kilometers per hour. At the same time, a bike B is two kilometers east of C and traveling east at 12 kilometers per hour. So this is like the problem in the lesson where we had the bridal path and the boat on the river. So I'm gonna draw essentially a coordinate plane here where point C is the origin. And a bike A is four kilometers north of point C so up here somewhere and traveling south at 16 kilometers per hour something like that all right so what would make the distance that that bike is from point C well that would be 4 but it's traveling towards C minus 16 T so this distance right here 
would have to be 4 minus 16t. Now, at the same time, bike B is 2 kilometers east of C, so starting out here somewhere, and traveling east at 12 kilometers per hour. So the bike is starting east and traveling away from C, like that. Now, what's this total distance right here? 2 plus 12t. Okay, so we have a diagram and we've input the given information right there. Okay, so yeah, do you guys see the right triangle again right here? All right, beautiful, right? And the distance between the two bikes would always be the hypotenuse of this triangle right there. So part A, <coughs> excuse me, show that T hours after 2 p.m., the distance between the bikes is root 400t squared minus 80t plus 20. So I'm looking for this distance right here with the given dimensions of one leg is 4 minus 16t, 2 plus 12t, and that distance right there. Okay, Pythagorean theorem again. And I already have the answer I'm looking for, but let's prove it. So c squared, or in this case d squared, has to equal 4 minus 16t quantity squared plus 2 plus 12t quantity squared. Okay, if I solve this for d, I should get this root. So, well, we've got, we need d, not d squared, so let's square root both sides. So d equals the square root of everything over here on the right. Okay, now all we have to do is expand these, these terms right here and then combine like terms and we're hoping to get 400t squared minus 80t plus 20. So let's find out what happens here. Well, 4 minus 16t quantity squared would be 4 times 4, 16. And then I'd have a 4 minus 16t, that would be what, is that a negative 64t? And then I have to do that again, another negative 64t, and then negative 16t times negative 16t would be positive 256t squared. All right, and then do the same thing with this one. Two times two is four, plus four, and then I've got two times 12t, 24t. Two times 12t again, 24t again, and then I've got a 12t squared would be 144t squared. All right, combine like terms, and look at what we happens here. You see the 256 t squared plus the 144 t squared? That would be what, 203, that's 400 t squareds. And by the way, that's what I was looking for. I think I got this. All right, how many t's do I have? Negative 128 t's plus 48 t's, and that's gonna give me my negative 80 t's, awesome. And then I hope my constants add up to 20. There's a 16, and there's a 4, plus 20. And there is the first part. Show that t hours after 2 p.m. The distance between the bikes is root 400t squared minus 80t plus 20. Awesome. Mathematical model. We've actually answered one question, but here's my model right here. d equals root 400t squared minus 80t plus 20. Okay, now, at what time is the distance between the bikes the least? <clears throat> now, we saw this one in the lesson, too, where we've got a radical, but we've got a quadratic underneath that radical, and that's a quadratic opening upwards. So, the t-coordinate of the vertex of this parabola will give me the minimum of the entire function right there, that input, I should say. All right, so the location of the min of the parabola is the location of the min of the entire function. All right, so t, well, how do we find the axis of a parabola? Negative b over 2a. And that's going to be the opposite of the b will be an 80. <coughs> over 2 times a, that'd be 800, or 80 over 800, that's 1 tenth. <laughs> I have it right there. So... Let me see, this all started at 2 p.m. And in one tenth of an hour, the distance between the bikes would be the least right there. So that means T equals 2 p.m. plus one tenth of an hour, or 
Can I write that as 2.06 p.m.? Awesome. Okay. Cool stuff here. Yeah. Answered a question. I wonder if there's more. There is. What is the distance between the bikes when they are the closest? Okay. Well, doesn't that mean I can go back and simply put this one-tenth into my distance formula to find the distance at that time? One-tenth of an hour? So, yeah, d of t equals root 400t squared minus 80t plus 20, my mathematical model. d of 1 tenth, I wrote that as 0.1, so I'm just going to do direct substitution. 400 times 0.1 squared minus 80 times 0.1 plus 20, and that's all underneath my radical. And you guys, I just punched this out on my calculator. Give you a second. You should punch it out yourself. And when I did that, I got four. Wow. And what are my units? That's four kilometers. And there's part C. Oh, that's a cool problem. Answered the question. Yes, we did. All right, number 21. P of XY is an arbitrary point on the line 2X plus Y equals 10. Well, that's not a lot of information, but I think I can draw a picture of this with the graph of a line. So, 2x plus y equals 10. Let's graph it. Alright, well that would be y equals negative 2x plus 10. So I'm going to have a y-intercept of 10 and then a slope of negative 2. So my line's going to do something like this. I just did a really rough sketch of that. Notice how I didn't even label a lot of stuff right here. And then P of X, Y is an arbitrary point on that line. So I can put some point anywhere on this line. And to keep things simple, I'm going to just keep it right here in quadrant one. There we go. So that's my picture and all the information they gave me, which is not much. Okay, now let's see. Express the distance D from the origin to P as a function of the X coordinate of P. So they want a distance formula from the origin to my arbitrary point P right there. Okay, I could do that with a distance formula. Distance formula, you guys remember that. D equals the radical and you've got your X sub two minus X sub one quantity squared plus Y sub two minus Y sub one quantity squared. Okay. This should be pretty. So, x sub 2, well, that's the x coordinate of point P, which is x, minus x sub 1, that's the x the coordinate of the origin, which is 0, x minus 0 squared. And then the same thing with my y sub 2 would be the y coordinate of point P, which all I know is it's y. Minus y sub 1 is 0, so that's a y minus 0 squared. And this distance formula is actually the pretty simple formula. d equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. Awesome. But now, again, that's multivariable right there. And they want this formula in terms of only the x coordinate of p. In terms of x. So how am I going to write this y squared in terms of x? <laughs> Remember, here's the line right here. And let's go ahead and solve that for y like we did to do this rough graph right here. So that's y equals negative 2x plus 10. Okay. And I need y squared, don't I? So I better square that. So y squared equals, well, if I take the quantity negative 2x plus 10 and I square it, my first term would be negative 2x times negative 2x, which is 4x squared. And then my outside would be a negative 2x times 10, which is negative 20x. And I got to do that again, negative 40x. And then 10 times 10 is 100. So that y squared in terms of x is 4x squared minus 40x plus 100. So D in terms of X only would be X squared plus Y squared or X squared plus 4X squared minus 40X plus 10. And that's all underneath that radical right there. And I suppose I could combine like terms. So D in terms of X only is going to be, well, radical. And I have X squared plus 4X squared. That's 5X squared minus 40X plus 100. Thank <laughs> you.
it is, D in terms of X. That was cool. All right, there must be a part B to this too. Yeah, nice mathematical model right there. What are the domain and range of this function? Okay, all right, easy. All right, well, the domain. So you guys know anything underneath a radical has to be greater than or equal to zero to be in the set of real numbers. So 5x squared minus 40x plus 100 better be greater than or equal to zero. All right, so again, picture your parabola on the plane. It could you know, intersect the x-axis once, twice or be up here in quadrant one because this one is opening upward with that 5x squared all right so i can check that by remember the discriminant i know this goes way back domain the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac so b squared would be here let's just be very careful there negative 40 squared would be 40 times 40 and let me just put the whole thing on my calculator so i i get it all so b squared parenthesis negative 40 close my parenthesis square that all right minus 4 times a which is 5 times c which is 100 i don't know that doesn't look that difficult probably could have done that without the calculator and i'm getting a negative 400 all right so this discriminant is less than zero all right so if the discriminant is less than zero that means i'm not going to have any x-intercepts so that means this problem has got to be above the x-axis there are no x-intercepts so if that's the case the domain is simply the set of real numbers so i can plug any x value i want into this real numbers now the range well I better find the min of this, you know, and there's lots of ways I could do it, but again, look under the radical. That's a quadratic. So if I find the location, the min of the min of the quadratic, that will give me the location of the min of the entire distance formula right there. So let's find this vertex of that quadratic. And you guys know vertex is x equals negative b over 2a. The opposite of b. Would, oh, I did it all. Let me let me talk through that. The opposite of B would be 40 over 2 times that 5, 10, and 40 divided by 10 would be a 4. There you go. So now I can plug that 4 into this distance formula to find my minimum value, my minimum distance. So I'm going to go D of 4 equals root 5 times 4 squared minus 40 times 4 plus 100. Oh man, it looks like I skipped a lot of steps here. Let's see, let's see if we can handle this. Four squared is 16 times five, 80, minus 160, that's negative 80, plus 100. Are you guys getting a 20? And now let's practice uh, uh, simplifying our radicals. 20 has a perfect square factor of four. So that would be four times five and I'm gonna bring the square root of four out. So two root five right there. And there we go. That is my minimum value of this distance formula. So I'm going to say since 2 root 5 is the min, d of x is going to have to be greater than or equal to 2 root 5. Another great problem. And we answered the question. Okay. Okay, number 25, our last problem. I hope you guys have had as much fun as I have had here. Anyway, from a raft 50 meters offshore, and look, the book gave us a diagram. There's my raft right there, 50 meters offshore. A lifeguard wants to swim to shore <laughs> and run to a snack bar 100 meters down the beach. So the lifeguard's going to jump off the raft and swim to the beach and then get on that sand and run all the way to the snack bar right there and the snack bar is 100 meters down the beach if the lifeguard swam directly to the shore like most people probably would do who knows though okay and then they gave us some information here you know if the lifeguard swims at one meter per second and runs at three meters per second Express the total swimming and running time t 
as a function of the distance x shown in the diagram. So I want running time t express the total swimming and running time t as a function of this x right here. Oh my. Well, we'd better write the hypotenuse of this right triangle in terms of x and then write this running distance in terms of x. Okay, that looks easy. So, here we go. Information. Let's put it in there. All right. What is this going to be right here? This hypotenuse. Well, Pythagorean theorem. Doesn't this distance right here squared have to equal 50 squared plus x squared. So d squared equals x squared plus 50 squared, Pythagorean theorem. And then what's this running distance right here? Well, the total distance is 100 meters, but the lifeguard has covered x of those 100 meters. So this distance right there would be 100 minus s. Oh, first let's do this. That's distance squared. Let's take the square root of that to get the distances. Root x squared plus 50 squared. Now let's talk about that distance right there, which would be 100 meters minus x meters. Okay, cool. So, t of x. Time. We're talking time here. All right. To answer this question, we've got to go back and do a little physics here. Distance. Can we write distance in terms of time? And isn't distance going to be rate times time? And we want time. So let's take this. Distance equals rate times time and solve for t. So that would mean time will always equal the distance I am traveling divided by the rate I am traveling at, d over r. And now I have my total distance here in terms of x. Okay, and the rate at which the lifeguard is swimming and the rate at which the lifeguard is running. So let's set it up. Okay, so time in terms of x. Now I forget, wasn't that lifeguard swimming at one meter per second? So distance is root x squared plus 50 squared over one. Okay, cool, distance over a. Now the running. Okay, the lifeguard is running a distance of 100 minus x, but wasn't it the lifeguard was running at, what, 3 meters per second? 100 minus x divided by 3. There's my model right there. Now we can clean this up a little bit. So I wrote it as the square root of x squared plus 2500 plus 1 third, 100 minus x. That looks great. So there's my mathematical model right there. Okay, let's make sure we've answered that okay, though. Okay, yeah, so if the lifeguard swims at 1 meter per second and runs at 3 meters per second, express the total swimming and running time, t, as a function of the distance x shown in the graph. All right, so I need t of x, and that is t of x now, but there's going to be a domain restriction here that I probably will want if I want to answer some questions. So, t of x equals radical x squared plus 2500 plus one third times the quantity 100 minus x. And again, well, what can this x distance x be in what interval? Well, the life card could have swam straight to the beach, making x zero, or the life card could have swam straight to the snack bar, making x 100. All right, so that means that that x has to be in the closed interval from 0 to 100 right there. And I want that to use a calculator to answer any questions. Okay, and here we go. Look at that. Use a calculator to find the minimum time. All right, so that means we're just going to put this function as y sub 1 equals root x squared plus 2500 plus one third times the quantity 100 minus x and I'm gonna put that on the window the x interval 0 to 100 so there's my graph when I did that and you make sure you do this on your calculator know which buttons to push alright and then let's find the minimum time so what time is it right here 
okay? So my window, you know, there's a window I use too for that graph, by the way. But again, you guys know how to find a minimum then. You just go that second calc min, and I got 80.5 seconds approximately. That's it, you guys. How cool. All right, we answered the question. Is there anything else? That is it. <laughs>